Hey guys, what is up? My name is Landon and welcome to the Jersey Zone. So today I wanted to talk about the Calgary Flames signing Nazem Kadri along with all of the other things the Flames have done so far this offseason. Now before we get into this, if you guys like these types of videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it a lot. Now the Flames have done a lot this offseason. They've had a pretty crazy offseason, I would say. They've had really low points and pretty high points as well. So I just wanted to talk about everything that they've done so far this offseason because it's very, very interesting. So this obviously all started with Johnny Drow, of course. So before free agency, he was kind of looking like he wasn't really going to sign. And then, of course, on the free agency day, he did not sign with the Calgary Flames and he ended up going to the Columbus Blue Jackets, signed there for seven years at $9.75 million a season. Of course, Johnny Gaudreau was a huge part of the Flames team for quite a while there, so it was really unfortunate. And the Flames also reportedly offered him more money as well. He just didn't want to take it. He wanted to be a little bit closer to family, so that was a pretty big loss for the Calgary Flames. And then on top of that as well, a little while after, there was rumors about Kachuk also not wanting to re-sign with the Calgary Flames and also wanting to leave. And at that point, for me, as kind of a Flames fan. They're my second favorite team. They're basically my Western Conference team. At that point, I was like, wow, this season is going to suck. This is going to be an awful offseason for the Calgary Flames, and they might even need to consider going into a rebuild depending on what they get for the Kachuk trade because he was an RFA, of course, so it was kind of uncertain how much he would actually get. But once the Kachuk trade actually happened, that really turned around my perspective on the Calgary Flames. So, of course, Matthew Kachuk was traded for Huberto, Uyghur, Cole Schwint, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, but he's a prospect and a first round pick as well. And I thought that was a really good deal for the Calgary Flames. Obviously, it was a sign and trade for Matthew Kachuk. So he technically signed with the Flames for eight years at $9.5 million. And then he got traded to Florida. But even though with that trade, Huberto and Uyghur only had one year left on their deals, I still thought that was a pretty good move for Calgary. Because at the time, I thought, well, if you weren't doing very well at the trade deadline, you can trade Huberto and trade Uyghur for a good amount. And there will be a pretty good kind of rental deal for the teams that are getting them. And you'll probably get a lot back. And that's kind of what my thought process was. Or you could also sign the guys as well. And obviously, they did end up signing Huberto for eight years at $10.5 million. So a million dollars more than Kachuk. And like that basically made the trade very, very good for me. I thought that was a fantastic move. And I know people are complaining about how long that contract is for both Huberto. And they're also complaining about it for Kadri as well. And we'll kind of get to that. But I really don't think it's that big of a deal. But even just looking at the $10.5 million, I think that's just a fine deal for Huberto. Yeah, it is a lot of money. But Huberto is definitely definitely worth that. He's a very good player. He's very skilled. And that's kind of the price some of these players are starting to become. They're starting to get into that $10 million range. And as the cap kind of goes up, you'll see more and more players like that. So I think this is a good deal for the Calgary Flames. He's definitely going to be worth it for at least four years, maybe even a little bit longer. It will just be maybe that back end of the contract that won't be as nice. But Still, I don't think a lot of Flames fans, and at least for me personally, I don't really think you should worry about that. I mean, that's so long in the future. You're more worried about like the present or at least like the near future. And Huberto is going to be really good for that time. So it's definitely worth it. And I think that trade works out really, really well for the Calgary Flames. And that's not even factoring in that they're getting Uyghur for one more year and maybe even more if they can sign him. But I don't really think they have the cap space for that or at least not at the moment. And then they're also getting Cole Schwint, who I don't really know a ton about, but I've seen him be at least projected to maybe be on the fourth line. And then they get a first round pick out of it as well, which they also maybe used in the future, or at least they have kind of used in the future deal, which kind of brings us to basically what happened yesterday. So yesterday, Sean Monahan and a first round pick with a ton of conditions. I don't really even know the full conditions, honestly, but I think it ends up being either Florida's first round pick or Calgary's first round pick. And it depends on the years and it has a whole bunch of conditions it was too much to read I really didn't want to read it all I don't really know but I think it's basically Sean Monaghan and a first uh, that went to Montreal for future considerations which is just nothing so they basically just traded away a first to get rid of Sean Monaghan's contract which was 6.375 million dollars if I'm remembering correctly and they basically just got rid of that contract to sign Nazem Kadri and the Flames signed Kadri for seven years at seven million dollars per season and I love this deal for the Flames now I have loved Nazem Kadri for a very long time. Obviously, as a Leafs fan, he was probably one of my favorite Leafs for quite a while. He has a ton of heart. He's just a fantastic player, but he does have his downsides as well. And of course, I was upset when he was traded to the Avalanche, but at the time, I understood why it happened. Obviously, Kadri's big downfall is his suspensions. If he doesn't get suspended in the playoffs, he's a fantastic player, but... He's very unpredictable. That is what Nazem Kadri is. 
You never know what he's really going to do. Sometimes he just has the red mist and he just kind of goes crazy for like a couple of minutes and he can either sway the momentum in your favor by throwing a big hit or fighting someone or whatever, or he can get suspended. It's you really don't know. But when he doesn't have that red mist moment, he is a fantastic player. He knows how to get under player skins. He's very good at drawing penalties as well. He's basically just like another version of Brad Marchand. You hate him if he's not on your team, but you love him when he's on your team. And like I said, I loved Kadri when he was on the Leafs, and I still kind of liked Kadri when he was with Colorado, but I didn't really like him when we were playing him, of course, which thankfully wasn't really too often, so I didn't have to hate him for very long. But yeah, really the biggest downside with Kadri is his suspension in the playoffs, because not only did he just have those suspensions as a Leaf, he had it with Colorado as well in the first season with Colorado. Now, last year in the playoffs, he was fantastic, and he definitely was a huge part of the Colorado Avalanche winning the Stanley Cup. But like I said, you never really know which Kadri you're going to get if you're going to have that Kadri that will get suspended or if he'll be a massive part of your playoff run. You're really not too sure, so it is very, very interesting, but I still think it is a good deal for the Flames. Like, I still think Kadri is 100% worth the $7 million, and I also think that he's worth the seven years as well. Once again, kind of like that Huberto contract, even though it is seven years. So Kadri will be 38 by the time his contract expires. I still think it's worth it. Yeah, he won't be probably worth that $7 million by the time it expires, but A, you're kind of looking for more in the moment, like this year or in the very near future. Those kind of moments with Nazem Kadri, like you're probably going to get a good four years or so of that contract where he is going to be a very good player and a very helpful player as well. But even after those kind of seasons, those first four seasons or so, the cap is still going to go up. It's projected, I think, to go up like $5 million or so in 2025. So that's automatically going to make the deal a little bit better. And the cap will still probably go up a little bit more as well. So I really don't think it's that bad of a deal. And like I said, yeah, the end of the contract might not look great, but I personally think it's worth it. Even if you sacrifice those last couple of years and they're not really great with those last few years, I think it's completely fine. I think, you know, the main four years or so of these contracts with Huberto and with Kadri, like I said, I think it'll definitely be worth it for the Flames. Even if they don't win a cup, I think it's just worth it to at least attempt to go for it. And I gotta say, I'm just really impressed with Brad Tree Living and how he basically turned this season around. Like I said, Basically, when Gaudreau left and Matthew Kachuk was rumored to be traded, I was like, this is going to be an awful season for the Calgary Flames. It's going to be terrible. Everyone's going to hate it. This is probably going to be where the Flames are going to start rebuilding or at least retooling, something like that. And he turned it from a rebuild or retool, possibly, into a team that's going to be a contender and a contender for probably a couple of years as well. I think he just did an absolutely fantastic job. Even with losing Gaudreau and Monaghan and Kachuk and Gabranson, he brought in guys to replace them and almost even be better than them as well. I think the Calgary Flames almost even upgraded even with losing those players. So I think he did a fantastic job. I think Tree Living deserves a lot of credit for what he did. I am quite surprised at how good of a job he actually did. And I think they're going to be a pretty strong team in the Pacific. I mean, the Pacific isn't really good anyways, or at least in my opinion, but I think they'll definitely be in the top two of that division. But anyways, that's at least my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, maybe specifically about the Kadri signing in the comments down below. Are you guys on board with it or are you kind of iffy on it? Let me know. And if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Also make sure to follow me on my Instagram and my Twitter at the Jersey Zone YT on Instagram and at the Jersey Zone on Twitter. Links are in the description down below. Like I said, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.